All right, let's do this. New year, new goosebumps. Kinda. Yeah, it's been a little while since we've done one of these, so let's kinda get into it. Gotta shout out one of my best friends in the whole wide world, Mr. Dr. JD. That's his name, don't worry about it. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. Because JD got me. Oh yeah. Look at that nice glare on there, but it says, Hey Dalton, and it's Tim Jacobus' signature. So, I got a signed piece of art of Slappy with a personalized message on it, and he actually gave this to me for Christmas, but I've been so busy I haven't had a chance to, like, upload it, so I didn't want to just, like, film me showing this off and then make, oh, two-minute video, bye. So it's been sitting here on the shelf, like this right here, and uh, that was one of the three things my friend JD got me. The other two, I'll show you. Yeah. So he went to Comic-Con last year, like before the show was out. As you can see on the back of here, it's kind of advertising it. And he picked me up not one, but two of the slappy masks they were giving me away. This one still has its eyes. This one does not. Which, huh. Creepy, right? I wanted to show these off. I don't really have much left on my shelves collection-wise. A lot of it's either packed away or I sold it when we moved apartments. But I got to add these to the collection. Talking about adding to the collection. As you can see here, I've got three pretty full bookshelves behind me here. Some stuff is stacked, some stuff is just sitting, but I've always got room for more books because any time spent with a book is not wasted time. Changed my mind. I recently went out of town this week and it was like a two birds, one stone kind of deal. So we left Sunday night and I actually went and met with an old Goosebumps YouTuber. You guys may be familiar with him, Zach Baby TV. If not, he goes by Campfire Tales now. Uh, if you guys don't follow him, you should check him out. He does a lot of creepy, scary stories and really good stuff. Anyway, been friends with Zach for a long time. We did the Horror Burrito together. We've been in multiple group chats together. We connected over Goosebumps. So, Zach lives in Tennessee, and that's where I want to live. Not specifically just because he's there, but just because it's not Florida. Without getting into the nitty and gritty, I went and saw Zach while it was my birthday. So, me and my wife took an impromptu road trip because we had some job interviews lined up. So. Once again, trying to move, I feel like that's a yearly theme of my channel, is like, oh, where are we moving this year? But yeah, went out of town. The reason I'm telling you all you this is because I stopped at some bookstores while I was out of town, and I found some pretty cool stuff. So, for all of you who may have completed your series and you're not sure where to go next with it, uh, this might kind of help give you some more inspiration to hunt when it comes to, like, thrifting or what to do next now that you've collected all the books. Now, granted, it takes a long time to collect all these books, but it's not that impossible. Realistically, if you spend a lot of time and you're looking to like spend the minimal amount of money, you could probably get it done in a year to two years max. So here's the fun part. Now you've got your books. How do you make your collection more rare or pristine? Well, one, anytime you go thrifting or shopping in general, you look for older copies that are in either better condition than what you have or first printings. And that's what I did today. I stopped at McKay's. And I've got a couple videos posted on my channel about McKay's, but McKay's is like a used book and audio store. You take all this pop culture stuff, books, movies, CDs, video games, all this good, cool stuff. You take it, and you can trade it to them for credit, and you can use that credit to buy other stuff there. I was there. I came across a really big stack of books, but the one book that caught my eye was this one right here. This is... It came from beneath the sink, and as you guys can see, it's pretty clean. Like, it's pretty clean. But what's important here is the printing. And if you look closely, yep, that is the first printing. So, I'm actually going to check my copy and see if this is going to replace it on this video. But the idea here is this. Eventually, if you're like a hardcore collector or even a completionist, shout out to Goosebumps Completionist, you might want an entire set of books that are all first printing. I know I do. When I'm out and about, I always look for good condition first printings. And actually, some of them, believe it or not, like Dead House, can fetch you up to $100 per printing. So, let's find out if this is replacing what's on my shelf. Alright, so here's my copy of It Came From Beneath the Sink. And as you can see, it's also pretty crispy. They're, uh, they're both... Very well maintained. 
you can see here, mine's the top, let's not forget that. Now it's the bottom. Spine-wise, my original copy is along the bottom. Here's something interesting. If you notice that, this is the one I picked up at McKay's. This is my copy. This one's got a white spine. This one's got a green spine when it comes to R.L. Stein. So anyway, let's see. So this is my copy, and my copy here is a fifth printing, as you can see here from the five on the page. There we go, yeah. So that's a fifth printing versus this is a first printing. So looking at them overall, it's not a hard decision that the first printing is now going in my collection. So if anybody needs a copy of It Came From Beneath the Sink, hit me up. I got one available. And just like that, a new book takes this one's place. We're nowhere near close to this book. I might hold on to it just until we get past this episode and Goosebumps Podcast Can't Be Murdered because I just don't have to read it for the podcast. So that's kind of something you can do with your collection if you've run out of things to collect. I also picked up this at McKay's, and the cover caught my eye. It's called Killer Pizza, and there actually was a sticker here, so I didn't get to see it. But if you look closely, there is a blurb here, and it's from Arl Stein. So I looked it up online, Killer Pizza, like the hardback, which this is not, this is a paperback, but the hardback is 25 This one was originally 6 bucks when it was new, and I got it for $0.95. Cents. I guess I should go over the prices as well. I got the, the one that took the place on my shelf of, it came from the sink, I paid two ninety five for this. This one was $0.95. Cents. It is a little beat up, but that's okay. Next up, this isn't really Goosebumps related, but as you can tell, these shelves aren't just goosebumps, actually. From here down, you can't really see it. This is all like the YA horror and stuff, but from here down, this is manga and such. So I collect all kinds of manga, primarily shonen or anything that has to do with action. I don't like the pervy stuff. I don't like the slice of life stuff. I don't like the, hey, we're in a high school. Or a real big one is like the, I think it's called Isekai, where they get reincarnated in another world. I don't like that stuff. What I did pick up today was volume one of Blue Exorcist. Now this is a pretty good one. It's kind of old, but for four bucks, I thought that was a pretty good steal. I don't have any of this one, and this is the first manga volume, so. I'm gonna have to make a little room there next to Boruto. The other two books I picked up while I was out were Kaiju number eight, volume number three. I got this one for six dollars. For a while, it was like seven ninety five at Target, brand new, but I thought for six bucks, not bad. It looked pretty good condition. I've got one and two, so this was great. I also picked up Kaiju number 8, volume 5. So I'm missing number 4, but that's okay, because now I've got more books in the series. So it just gives me more inspiration to go pick up 4 and then onward. I think they're up to volume 8 or 9 now. So it wasn't like a insane haul. Sorry, it's been a while since I've done one of these kind of videos. Life's been crazy between the holidays and all the other projects I do. I do a lot of projects, so you have no idea. I pretty much spent the entire time when I wasn't driving on the road editing, and I only got like 3 videos done, which doesn't sound like a lot. But when you see the Let's Get Invisible episode of Goosebumps Podcast Can't Be Murdered, you'll understand and you'll appreciate it. With that being said, thanks for stopping in and checking out my birthday haul. Hope you guys enjoyed today's content. If you haven't done so already, click that subscribe button. Maybe leave me a comment. If not, just hit the like button. That helps too. Regardless, thank you for stopping in. I appreciate your viewership, and I'll keep you updated as we release more stuff. Look forward to weekly uploads of Goosebumps Podcast Can't Be Murdered as well as other book-related stuff, which include, but are not limited to, shorts and other content. I've got a really, really interesting video I plan to upload after this, so hopefully you guys enjoy that. But with that being said, we'll see you in the next one.